Casey Gray here from The Conscious Builder, and on today's video, I'll be walking you through the complete energy retrofit of an 1860s stone farmhouse just outside of Ottawa, Ontario. I'll bring you through from planning to completion, but most importantly, I'm gonna show you how we made this house more healthy, comfortable, and efficient. <laughs> The main goal for this project was the energy retrofit portion to make the house more healthy, comfortable, and efficient. In doing this though, it did allow us to upgrade the interior finishes because we had to do it from the inside to maintain the look of the stone building from the exterior. Before we start demolition on any project, we have to get what's called a DSS, which stands for a designated substance survey. What this survey this report does is it tells us if there's any hazardous materials present in the building. In this case, we had asbestos in the drywall compound of the existing building, so the original building, which we had to have removed. Later on, actually, when we started to do some more investigation work, we found out that there is vermiculite in the wall. So we were like, uh-oh, maybe we have some more. However, luckily we had it tested and there was no more asbestos in that. So it was really just that one location. In wanting to maintain the character of the original building, we had to work through a lot of details like trim and railing, baluster, stairs, and, and aesthetic things like that. But we also had to work through the details around the bay window and how they had no insulation where the duct placement was in front of those. There was also a false fireplace that they didn't like, so we had to remove that. They had some interesting track lighting that we had to discuss. There was a difference in floor heights from where the kitchen was renovated down into the existing part of the home. And lastly, there was a rodent problem that we had to get rid of as well. Rats and bats to be specific. As for projects that we always do like this, we did an initial energy assessment. And the information we got from that is that this home was using about 367 gigajoules of energy per year. And a typical home of this size should be using about 126. So this is almost three times worse. And the air changes per hour on the blower test was coming in at 11.7, which is extremely high because when we do passive homes, we're aiming for like 0.6. So if you were to put all that leakage and put it into one spot, you'd have a hole in the side of your house, four square feet. In total, there was about three weeks of demolition. We also do some of the demolition, but we stick to the structural work because we'll do all the framing, so we'll do that at the same time. But the demolition crew had about three weeks and it was broken into two parts. So the floor sagged about seven and a half inches from high point to low point, which forced us to remove the stairs in order to make the main floor nice and level. The good news is that this allowed us to reconfigure the stairs a little bit, raise the landing up so that it would be closer to the entrance into the master bedroom and then you just have a little bit of a shorter run at the top leading to the main second floor. The floor joists on the main floor were not really joists at all. They were solid cedar logs that were smoothed out on top to put the floor on. So what we did in order to fix the seven and a half inch slope that I mentioned is we installed the three ply two by four beam across the floor joist and then we hung our new floor joist so across the existing floor joist and we hung our new floor joist off of that and then our wall our frost wall let's call it on the inside of the stone that we we're going to install for insulation sat on top of that beam so it gets hidden in the wall it allowed us to level up each joist individually with the laser so that everything ended up being perfectly level across the entire main floor. For the second floor, we weren't gonna get into reframing everything, but we did what we could in order to make it better. So the existing beams that were there were left, but they were really chopped apart. We couldn't take them out without getting into a massive beam. So we just added LVLs underneath those, added some new posts, we jacked them up, we added a new beam to the basement with which would sit on the existing foundation. And we did what we could to get rid of the sag. And then we leveled the second floor where the stairs came to meet it and left everything else as is and just made it work where we could. Engineers are extremely important. So the engineer worked with us to come up with a solution for the main floor. And it was actually his idea on that and how we solved that leveling, which worked out really well. I'm really happy with the solution for that. Uh, he also told us about some cracks that we exposed that we had to get repaired and by the mason, and those had to be chipped out and remorted and repointed. And we also got into details about making sure that the roof was attached 
to the house because it actually wasn't. It was just kind of sitting on the stone. So when we framed our frost walls, which is going to take on the insulation, we ended up attaching those to the roof and then attaching those to the stone wall as well. One of the reasons these old stone homes last so long is because of their ability to dry out, whether it's to the inside or the outside. So in the summer, the sun, the heat will be driving the moisture into the house. In the winter time, the heat loss from running the furnace or the boiler, or however you're heating your old stone home, drives that moisture out and dries out the wall. So that's one of the reasons they last so long. So when thinking about how we're going to improve the efficiency and the comfort and the health of this home, we have to take that into consideration. So what happens if we insulate the wall, if we make it more airtight? Where's that moisture going to go? If we were to, for example, just spray foam the entire interior walls of all the stone, that doesn't allow the stone to dry to the inside anymore. It can only dry to the outside and could cause problems down the road. Would it happen right away? Probably not, but eventually you would like to see some deterioration on the exterior and it could be because of this and that's a risk we were not willing to take. We did expose some cracks when we did the demolition, so some structural cracks that the engineer wanted repaired. So the mason came in, he fixed those, but we also needed him to smooth out all of the interior stone walls because the air barrier that we were using in this place is the Henry Airblock 31MR. This product in particular is a rubberized membrane that stays permeable, and that's why we wanted to use it so that we can have that vapor travel through the wall if need be. So that got all applied. And then what we did is frame a two by four wall with an airspace behind it in front of that. So we'll call that the frost wall. And then we did two layers of R14 Rockwool Comfort Bat. The reason we chose the comfort bat is because we have to assume that moisture will get into this wall at some point. I always like to assume that moisture will get into a wall, whether it's a 160 year old stone home or a wood frame or whatever it may be, just assume that water will get in somehow. What's going to happen to that wall, that insulation if water gets in there? With rock wool, if it gets wet, it doesn't lose its R value and mold doesn't grow on it. So that's why we like to use it, especially in situations like this one. On the inside of our framing, we used the Intello Plus product. This could be used as a vapor barrier and an air barrier. On our walls, we were really just using it as a vapor barrier. On the ceiling, it was also the air barrier and the vapor barrier, in which case we had to make sure that the ceiling portion was connected to the air block on the wall but not necessarily to the Intello on the wall, which is just our vapor barrier. Installing windows in stone homes is always fun, especially when there is a big sag in one of the corners. So like I mentioned, we had about a seven and a half inch drop from one side of the house to the other side. And this one corner that really dropped down, there was two windows located there. So we ordered the windows to be small enough to give us a little bit of play, knowing that the openings were not gonna be perfectly square, but two openings in particular were really bad because of how far this one corner of the building had settled. It had stopped settling, but it had done a lot of settling over the years. Uh, because of this, we had to cut out the window opening a little bit, but it wasn't too bad. We were still able to make the window work well. And then the mason came back again in order to patch up everything around those windows, make them look nice and pretty. And then the caulking company came by and caulked up all the windows and sealed them up nicely. The windows we went with are North Star, they're PVC windows. They are triple glaze, so they're, they're not fancy passive house windows or anything like that. But in our experience, they are a good value. They perform well. We haven't had any service calls on them in our, on our past projects. They show up when they say they're gonna show up and they're good to work with. Now, after the windows were in and we had the air barrier done, we were able to do our pre-drywall blower door test. And with this, we typically find le extra leaks that we did not seal up. There are little holes here and there. And we did in this case, of course, especially with all the different transitions that we had to deal with. However, we were still able to improve the air tightness by over 60% with those leaks and including the fact that we didn't do anything to the basement foundation or the basement floor, which is a dirt floor. So we know that most of our leakage is coming from the basement because you can actually stand by the basement door and just feel the air coming up through the stairwell with the blower door test. But we were quite impressed with how well the air block did and how well the transitions did in order to transition from the air block to the blue skin to the Intello Plus. If you want to check out a virtual tour of this house prior to the drywall going on, you can check out the link in the description below. 
Obviously this house turned out beautifully, but the real benefit to a project like this is the health, comfort, and efficiency that you get from it. It makes the indoor air fresher. It makes it more comfortable when you're living in the space, when you're moving from room to room. And more importantly, it gives you a better quality of life. If you want to learn more about energy retrofits like this, be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit that bell button so you get notifications. If you have questions, please post them in the comments below. And if you're interested in new construction, I suggest you check out our three-day cottage series here. And until next time, remember to live consciously.